Uh, okay, let's go ahead and see what we have. I just I went ahead and started a simulation from frame zero. The next thing I want to uh, do is to just go ahead and change the color for these guys to a normal color. So they are sort of. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead. There we go. Now all of these guys are the same color, and we have this sort of simulation. Let's see what we're gonna get. I'm gonna just select these guys and get back to frame zero. Hit space. And this is the simulation that we have here. There we go. Okay, cool stuff. Very great. Now, uh, the next thing I want to actually do, I think about frame 800 is uh, going to be enough. Everything is done. So I'm going to uh, just reduce the timeline to about uh, 800 frames. Okay. And the next thing I want to uh, do is to actually give you a bit of a advice. Uh, if you want your stream to be a bit more chaotic and a bit more irregular, you can add this uh, demon called noise field. Uh, and uh, you can possibly add this, but uh, in this case, I really I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But if you want to have a, a lot of irregularity in your stream and chaos, you can go ahead and add the noise field and it really it does the job really uh, perfectly. This is it. The next thing I'm going to do is to uh, just uh, crunk up some settings and start the uh, final particle simulation. And once the particle simulation is done, we can start the meshing process. So the first thing I'm going to my uh, export central and uh, under uh, the come down here objects, you got these uh, particle emitters. You can see all the three square emitters are going to be exported. Uh, as uh, dot bin file particle cache that can easily be imported in Cinema 4D using the real flow plugin. Uh, we have also Krakado inside Cinema 4D, so we can go ahead and save PRT file and save the uh, use the Krakado for the render. But in this case, we really want the fluid just uh, to uh, be inside Cinema 4D. But if we want, we can actually go ahead and save the uh, dot prt files if we want this is absolutely awesome. this is uh, it contains a lot of information position velocity force normal texture age isolation and other stuff that really can be used to create some cool effect using the crack at particle inside cinema 4d if you want we can do that and also uh, the uh, crack at plug inside cinema 4d we can actually use the real flow uh, particles, I guess, to uh, make some uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, simulation and the rendering inside Cinema 4D using the Krakatoa. But uh, in this case, I don't think we're really going to need to do that because it's going to be uh, sort of huge files. So we have these three square emitters. And uh, for the time, this is the only thing we really want. We just uh, want this, uh, the objects, animation, SD, and cache that. BDC are going to be exported, which we really don't need them because I guess uh, we just want the simulation. We have the mesh back inside Cinema 4D and we don't want to export the logo that we uh, imported from Cinema 4D to RealFlow again back from RealFlow to Cinema 4D because we have the logo. So we basically don't need the objects. But uh, for good measure, let's actually have it because it's going to be very small. and. Uh, for the moment, we don't have any mesh and we're going to be uh, adding that also. But I think we are good to go and crank up some of the settings. Uh, for now, I'm going to uh, ex uh, go ahead and increase the resolution so we have a bit more particles and a nicer simulation. I'm going to uh, use something like 25. Okay. Now, the higher, really, the better when the time comes to uh, having more particles, the more the particles. Uh, the more the uh, interaction between the particles are going to be accurate. So, uh, but we really don't want to uh, overkill it in this case. I think 25 is more than enough, really. We're going to have uh, hundreds of thousands of particles, I guess, maybe tens of thousands, I'm not sure. But we're going to have a lot of particles. And I'm going to go ahead and go through at uh, the resolution of about 25. I think it's going to be enough. And the next thing I'm going to my simulation option. And crank up some of these settings. We got the min sub step. I'm gonna go ahead uh, to something like five, just to have a better situation here. And the max sub steps, I'm going to uh, maybe to something like 200 will be more than enough. But I'm gonna go ahead to uh, 250, or uh, yeah, 250 is gonna be enough in this case. And uh, hit OK. 
I'm going to uh, save the scene before doing anything here to, just to make sure we are in a good situation. I'm going to save it as 0204 so you have access to the files and uh, I'm, I, I think we're really uh, we can start the simulation and see how exactly everything is uh, done. So what I'm going to do is to uh, go ahead and do the simulation. It possibly take uh, maybe a few hours or less. I'm not sure. And after the uh, simulation is done, we're going to get back and start the meshing process and export the particle and meshes into Cinema 4D and start the process of setting up the scene inside Cinema 4D and have a, a nice, really high quality render uh, in Cinema 4D and after Cinema 4D is done we are going to need to go inside After Effects and do some compositing there. So see you in the next lesson.